Hi, this is Paul Turner from Pharma Forum. I'm here in Dusseldorf at the 9th Annual SFE Europe event. Always good to see what's going on within Pharma. And I'm going to try and get some comments from some various people just to see how Pharma's reacting to the new environment. So Charlotte, this is the 9th Annual SFE event. How have you seen the focus change over the years? So I've been to three, I think, and I think this one is broader now in terms of the topics. It's not just specifically SFE, it's much more the industry, some of the evolution. One of this, the talks this morning was looking at branded generics and biologicals and how we need to broaden our focus of what we're thinking about and the implications that that might have, of course. So I think it reflects what's going on in the industry, which of course is massive change. Leandro, great presentation today. Now, obviously quite a challenging time for pharma at the moment. How do you see pharma companies adapting internally to this new environment? Well, I mean, for a start, I don't think they're doing very well in general, although to, to, to be fair, everybody's trying to do, you know, create new things and look at different ways. But the problem with pharma is still very slow and a bit traditional, as everybody would say, on the way they approach change, um, in part, because, uh, as people in pharma say, I would say to you, because it's a regulated industry, which is usually a rather weak argument to justify that there is not much to do, although there are millions of things that change can happen inside the organization that has nothing to do with a regulation of any kind. I would welcome more courage, more boldness, more thinking out of the box if I use this stereotype, but just looking at other possibilities of reinvention more than an incremental change. And the incremental change is done. Anything that could be incremented has been incremented. The music has been there for a while, but I haven't seen serious attempts to use a behavioral answer to what may be a challenge with the customer, for example, with access, with things like that. I mean, the process answer is always going to be there. The structural answer is going to be there. The behavioral answer is overdue. And I think that that's something that particularly Salesforce or, or client-facing structures need to look at very seriously. So, Michael, how do you see social media playing a role within CRM, within pharma? Yeah, I think social media is already playing a role. For example, when I presented uh, this topic here at the uh, SFE event, by the time I got upstairs, I had five LinkedIn invitations already. Yeah? So it's here. I mean, this consumer phenomena is here. Pharmaceutical enterprises can use social media to try to better coordinate their communications with key prescribers and with key opinion leaders. And it's only a matter of time between, before CRM system providers have embedded these type of tools within their software. So Rob, social media is the real buzz term at the moment. How do you see it impacting on the conversations here about SFE? Yes, obviously uh, over here we are talking about Salesforce effectiveness. And what I see is that social media is really coming up here, but they are sort of in their discussions, as I might say, a little bit behind. Because the first thing that a pharmaceutical company has to envision is how to integrate the different tools, approaches, uh, IT uh, things, etc., into one larger picture of how do we want to evolve towards the next approach to the market. Specifically, while the markets are so much differentiating between them, like the emerging markets, like the major markets and the normal markets. And probably, I think a lot of uh, vendors will, will team up with pharma, like pharma has to team up with healthcare providers to make better care for, obviously, the patients. And that is the thing that I haven't heard so much in Salesforce effectiveness conferences the name of the patient and that, it, that we do it all for them in the end. And I think that will move centrally, more centrally to the pharmaceutical companies themselves. Since, since the pharmaceutical company is only, well say now it would, would be an insult, but, but only recently uh, developing ways of how can we reach with our information and services the patients to create better care it is a long way that they come from and it will be very difficult to go that way. Thibaut, so how do you see new technology playing a part in SFE now? Well, we, uh, we've seen that uh, most of the uh, life science companies have uh, been adopting or are testing new technologies 
uh, because it has a real impact on the way they can interact with the customers. And it's uh, incredible to see how, the, for example, the iPads, the new tablets, have changed the, the, the game uh, with the, uh, in the relationship of the uh, sales reps with the Oscar professionals. Because now you can really completely uh, use the uh, multimedia capabilities of the tablets, which were already existing on tablet PCs, but uh, with the instant-on capabilities of the uh, iPad and uh, all the functionalities that we can embark on that and link to the CRM application, it's completely different. So now, I mean, the, this technology is really there to enhance, to improve the relationship and the impact of the uh, call that the uh, pharmaceutical company are doing on physicians. Pretty cool. And are you seeing this technology being used by many companies? Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. And we, if you look at the uh, at the forecast from Gartner or other analysts, they predict that in the next two or three years, the market would completely switch from the uh, old laptops to tablet PCs, to, to tablets, uh, uh, touch tablet like the iPad or the Android or all the other which are coming into the market now. Mark, you're this year's winner of Farmer Idol with Eye for Farmer and here as a territory manager. From your perspective on the ground, what's the real key to getting SFE right? The key for me in getting SFE right is as follows. We have a lot of people on the ground that we have to make them work more efficiently and more effective. And we have to use the resources within our company like training, marketing, and as a result of utilizing these better, we will then get to a point where we're allocating our sales better as a resource, which increases our productivity and reduces the cost to the company. Alan, what do you think are the real essentials to getting key account management right within Pharma? The essentials for me are that one, it has to be right for your organization. So you've got to do some research work to make sure that key account management is right for you, your company and the customers as well. I think if you make the decision that it is right, then it's got to come from top. The support from senior management from the top right down has to be put in place. And then you basically have to make sure that you train your people accordingly. Uh, I can't emphasize enough how much training and coaching you have to put in place in order to support people through the key account management journey.